Hello everyone, today I'll introduce you to an app called Affinity Designer. About this app, it's an app rather meant for professionals and I find a bit difficult to use for beginners, which is why I've never talked about this app. But since I got comments saying that they want to know how to use this app, I've decided to create some designs using the app today. So to explain what Affinity Designer is, it's an app that processes a combination of raster and vector data. To make it even easier to understand, it's like an app of a combination of Illustrator and Photoshop apps. It's got many features, making it perfect for drawing, but it takes some time to get used to it, so I wouldn't recommend it for beginners. I won't be able to cover everything, but I'm hoping to roughly explain how to use the app in today's video. Alright, let's start. Open Affinity Designer and you should see many canvas lining up like this. This time, I'll add some edits to this image to have a more complete image like this by the end. To give you a brief overview of the tool sets, on the right we can find tools such as a layer panel and adjustment layer, which is for changing the color and choosing a brush. Then we have a tool panel on the left. Those who use Illustrator and Photoshop you already know, but we got things like pass tool, move tool, filling function as well as erasers here. There are three options at the top. The one on the left is a vector, pixel in the middle, and then export for the one on the right. We will paint by switching these vectors and pixels on and off. When you want to use a path tool or a base curve or something around Illustrator, for instance, paint with vectors panel selected. In contrast, when you want to do something along Photoshop, blurring the image or making small adjustments, draw while pixels panel selected. It can be a bit confusing here, but you can think of it as Illustrator and Photoshop apps are combined within this app, meaning that you'd have to switch them on and off. When you want to use Illustrator-like functions, turn the Vectors mode on, which is on the left, and when you want to use Photoshop-like functions, you have to activate the Pixels mode in the middle. Right now, I'm going to draw the outline of this model on Vectors mode or Illustrator mode. Grab a brush and start tracing the outline here. I'm drawing using brush right now, but it's display as a path, which means you can always make a change later on as it stays as a base curve. Since it's a path, it doesn't get pixelated, and you can draw a beautiful line even if you enlarge or shrink the image. From here, I'll start tracing the outline of her clothes. By the way, speaking a little more about Affinity Designer, I personally used to use it a lot, but I just almost never talk about it in my videos. And there are three reasons why I didn't want to. One is that there are just too many functions. This app does help you draw something complex, but with too many options built in, it's easy to get lost trying to figure out how to access each one of them. So I was actually super stressed out when drawing for the first time using this app, and this is why it's not suitable for beginners. Second, it's relatively expensive for an iPad app. It costs 24 US dollars. If you're serious about this, then I think it's fine to make a purchase, but I don't think many people would pay that much, so that's why I kind of keep it to myself. And lastly, it's because there should be a new app similar to this app releasing soon enough. The app code named Project Gemini will be released by adopting a new feature. And what it does is basically the same thing where you can draw by switching between raster data and vector data which are combined within a single app. But I think it's better to wait, see what this app is like once it's released and decide what to do. So for those who are considering purchasing the app Affinity Designer, it may be worth waiting for a bit, I think. I'm assuming it will be released within 6 months or so, and I'll make a video on a comparison between Affinity Designer and Project Gemini so you can decide which one to buy.
So just like this, the outline is complete. When you look at the layer panel right now, many layers for path tools are lined up. As you draw, the path layers are added automatically one after another, and it will be way too much to manage. So I highly recommend you group them as often as you can when using Affinity Designer. Right now it's on vectors mode, but we'll switch this to pixel mode. Pixel mode is pretty much the same as Photoshop. Use pixel mode when you want to blur or add gradations to the image. Other than that, this mode has limited usage. Additionally, there are more brushes available in pixel mode, so use this mode when you want to express something using brushes. Okay, so I'm done with the base color for both top and the bottom, and now I'll be adding shadows and highlights. Add a layer from the plus button on the layer panel to create a new layer where we'll be adding in a different color. Alright, like this, I managed to add shadows and highlights. When you want to change the color, press here on the adjustment layer where you can find curves and color balance. So I'm going to press the curves button and slide on the screen to apply the curves function, and now the color has changed. There are many other options to adjust your color, so manipulate them according to your preferences or your ideal color scheme. It should show as a layer adjusted on the layer panel here, so you can also make changes later on. Alright, now the coloring is complete. When I look at the layer panel in the end, there are so many layers in line as you can see. 
you get lost if you don't group them, so make sure to do that. Also, when using Affinity Designer, make sure you are aware whether you are on Vectors mode or on Pixel mode before you draw so that things get easier. You probably find it a bit difficult to use this app, but once you get used to it, it's possible to create something amazing, so give it a try if you're interested. At very last, I just want to add my signature before we end. When adding a signature, make sure to switch to Vectors mode from Pixel mode. Alright, that's all for today. Thank you for watching my video. I have many other videos introducing iPad apps that can be used for design as well, so please subscribe to my channel if you like. Bye bye!